In this presentation, we will discuss the concept of decentralization. Decentralization being a core component to responsibility accounting. So what is decentralization? I like to think of it in this format. We can think of it as the size of the company and the scale of the decentralization that will follow with the size of the company. In other words, when we think of a small business, then typically we think of an owner of the small business and the owner of that small business will be involved in much of the day-to-day -day operations of that small business. As the business grows, then the owner is going to want to take themselves out of some of the day-to-day -day operations and decentralize, give that responsibility to others so that the owner can focus more on the big picture goals rather than on the day-to-day -day goals. And of course, as this continues to happen, as a company gets larger and larger, there becomes more and more of a need to have some decentralization and give more responsibility to other departments within a company. So if we're talking about a large company, companies are divided into smaller units, possibly called divisions or segments. In this presentation, we will discuss the concept of decentralization, decentralization being core to responsibility accounting. So what is decentralization? I like to think about this by thinking about different sizes of an organization and imagining an organization growing from a sole proprietor to a large corporation. If we're a sole proprietor, then we know that the owner of that sole proprietor is going to be involved in many of the day-to-day -day decisions within that organization. As the business grows, then there's going to be a lot more delegation of those decisions to other people so the owner can put their time in the most value added way to the business while some of the day to day type of activities are then delegated some other place. Of course, as uh, companies get larger and larger, this needs to happen more and more. And so with a larger organizations, as companies get to a certain size, the company is going to have to delegate the decision making to different segments, different units, different divisions. And as they do so, these different divisions are gonna have more and more say, more and more control over what happens on the divisional level. That allows the manager to basically, uh, and the top level management, to be more focused on the things that they need to be more focused on, typically the, the longer overarching type of vision. So just realize when you think about this decentralization kind of concept, it's out of necessity that we have the decentralization. In other words, as things get larger, we typically need to have more decentralization in order for things to run well, in order for things to run smoothly, because we can't run things as efficiently simply from a top-down approach. We have to decentralize and give more authority as things get larger to different segments, to different regions, in order to uh, be the most efficient, typically. And the way this decentralization will typically work is that as a company gets larger, we can decentralize by region. We can say, here's the different areas that we have. We're going to decentralize by those regions. And we're going to put specific individuals in charge of managing those specific regions and therefore be able to give responsibility and measure the performance of those individuals by those regions. Or decentralization through the product line. So different products that the company produces, we can segment out the company by those different products and put managers in charge of those different product lines. Again, being able to give more responsibility to those managers and hold them accountable, be able to measure their performance. When we consider the concept of decentralization, there's going to be benefits and there's going to be drawbacks to it. So we'll discuss both the pros and cons of them. In other words, each organization is going to have to decide how much hierarchy they're going to want, how much control is going to be in the central office versus some type of decentralized format. And there's pros and cons to either format. Some companies will be more centralized, much more the decision making possibly made from the central office. And some companies may be much more decentralized. And it could depend on the type of organization, the types of companies that might work better or just the culture and the structure of us different organizations as to which organizations might be more or less centralized. However, as uh, companies get larger, there will be need typically for more decentralization so that the company has the ability to grow. But within the size of each company, there's going to be variances from company to company in terms of how the company will decentralize and how much decentralization there will be. So what are going to be the benefits, the advantages of decentralization? One is that if you think about the 
regional managers, the people that are going to be involved in certain areas or certain product lines, they're going to have more timely access to information in a decentralized system. Why? Because they're on the ground and they don't have to wait for basically the processing of information. You can imagine a situation where everything has to process through the central office. If that's the case, if all the big decisions or even like the day-to-day -day type decisions of a regional office have to go to the central office and then be processed, decision be made on it that then is dictated to the managers of the regional offices, it becomes a little bit slower. That's one of the problems with a centralized process. The central office doesn't have the means to deal with many of the day-to-day -day type processes in the regional areas, at least not efficiently or as quickly. If you're able to get managers that can see the overarching vision, apply the overarching vision on the department by department level, then they can see what's going on and get that information a lot more timely in the area that they are in and hopefully take the relevant action necessary to do so. In order to do that, however, you need to have good managers that are on the ground that can basically make the decisions within the framework of the overarching business uh, vision as well as gather the appropriate information. If that is the case, however, then it could be more timely information to make quick decisions in a more decentralized area. Allows top management to focus on the big picture. And that's going to be one of the major benefits, of course, because the top management, it's just like when a small business starts to, to delegate out the responsibilities. It's delegating out responsibilities not because they're not important. They are important. These are the day-to-day -day activities that need to happen in order that the lifeblood of the business, they need to happen. But the, what we need to do is, from the owner's perspective is think about the long-term vision, the long-term map. And that's more and more where the vision of the owner of an organization tends to want to be. It needs to be in order to have that long-term vision so that the day-to-day -day activities can then be guided to and line up with the long-term vision. The same is true for a large organization. If you think about the central office, the central office doesn't need to be if we can have less of the day-to-day -day activities or the regional activities that happen on a day-to-day -day basis to be needed to involve the central office the central office can then do what they are expected to do or should be doing and that's going to be guiding the long-term map the long-term plan that's where they want to spend their time delegating much of the day-to-day -day type of activities the regional activities, the lifeblood activities, the things that really run the company on a day-to-day -day basis to regional divisional areas and being managed by those areas if they can trust the management of the day-to-day -day activities to be run well there, then that system can work good because the top level management then is freed up just like a small owner is freed up if they delegate their responsibilities to then the, the larger or bigger picture type of activities. It could provide training for employees. When we think about larger organizations, part of the purpose of a company, part of the objective of the management of the companies is of course to act as agents of the shareholders who are the owners of the company. And part of that is to develop good leadership through in, within the company. And the only way to do that is really to delegate responsibility. So if we have more decentralization, in other words, we are able to allow regional managers to have the ability to make the decision-making processes. They're going to make mistakes, but they also could improve the process as well and develop within that process and possibly develop into top-level management. In other words, it's best within an organization if we can grow management within the organization and be able to replace uh, the management. There should be no one person within a large organization that is uh, the whole organization is dependent on even the top level management and so to have more decentralized areas you got a lot more kind of training ground testing ground with decision making skills with people in those regional areas that can then learn grow possibly then uh, take over the top level uh, decisions as well the less centralized you have something then you have a lot of people within the division that are really good at kind of following orders and that's good too, that you need that in some areas as well, but it's not going to be as transferable to the decision-making process, to the top-level management where you're trying to develop someone who's going to be able to uh, make, make the decisions and not just follow 
uh, what's what needs to be happening. So they want you want to give more de more delegation of the authorities to apply the overall principles of the company within a region. And, the, and then that allows people to kind of have more flexibility to make their own decisions within that overarching framework rather than having very stringent kind of rules because that takes another type of discipline to, to basically run the day-to-day -day type of activities. Uh, you need more of a kind of discipline on that format. So that's one of the advantages of decentralization, increased employee morale and retention. Oftentimes when people have more decision-making skills, more control over what they are doing, it increases their morale. They feel more value. In other words, if you're told what to do, and even if it's the right thing to do, and you just basically do what you are told, then the fact that it's right or wrong doesn't matter as much to you. It doesn't register as much as, as, as if you have the control yourself to basically say, this is in alignment with what I think uh, the company objectives are, what we're trying to do here, and therefore we're going to make decisions to achieve that goal. That's going to give people more motivation most of the time. If you say, hey, this, this is our goal, this is our alignment, we'd like to get your input in order to help us to achieve that goal, that really is an internal motivation and, and that can motivate people uh, as much as pay oftentimes, depending on the type of individuals we're dealing with. And so that's one of the major benefits of a decentralized system. You're able to give people that, uh, f that flexibility to make those decisions and you're developing the type of people that are internally motivated rather than externally motivated. Uh, if you're dealing with a situation that's very hierarchical and you're basically just telling people what to do and saying, do this in accordance with the way we need it to be done, you're probably developing more people that are going to be really good uh, at obeying the the rules and might be uh, motivated externally by the compensation but may not be developing so much of that internal motivation which is really there by uh, being involved in the decision making and feeling like you have a kind of uh, a difference in terms of your input into the decision making process so what are some disadvantages of uh, decentralization one is that it could lead to divisional managers being too focused on local goals rather than the big picture, the big vision of the company, and therefore do things that would be harmful to the overall vision of the company in order to achieve local goals. In other words, it's possible, and we can think of the structure of the organization as top-level management, thinking about the vision of the organization. What's the overarching vision of the organization? Breaking that down, then setting responsibility goals for each department. But as we do so, each department knows that they're going to be measured on the goals that are set for that department. They're not measured on how much they're contributing to the overarching vision necessarily. In other words, these goals are set in order to, of course, achieve the overarching vision. But we don't want things to happen so that people try to achieve the goals and do things that would be harmful to the overarching vision. That's a danger that could happen. And in order to deal with that problem, we have to have some type of culture within the organization to be able to, to, be able to say, hey, uh, these are the goals, these are the objectives, this is our overarching vision, and hopefully the management that we have in place will see the overarching vision and take actions that are in alignment with the overarching vision, even if they do not line up with the short-term goals or could harm the short-term goals and basically be able to communicate that and why those decisions were made possibly with upper management when that is the case. Then we have the conflict between departments. Oftentimes when we think about the decentralization, there can be competition between the departments or a lack of communication. In other words, if you have a top-down type of structure, everything goes from the corporate office and then is communicated to the rest of the organization. It's very clear what the chain of command is, what the line is, where the information, the decision has come from and how that dis decision will then be disseminated through the rest of the organization. When you have decentralization then, you've got different uh, regional departments that might have conflicting goals and they might actually be in competition in some ways with each other as they're trying to reach their goals because that's going to be part of the motivational structure of a decentralized system oftentimes. If that is the case, if it gets to the point where, that, where there's a conflict of interest, where the tension between departments is not uh, helping to stimulate the departments to work more, but is in fact causing problems that are going to limit the overarching vision and achievement of the organization. 
then that can be causing a problem as well. And again, the way to basically reduce that is to have the culture of the organization be such that uh, although there's going to be competition within the departments, all, with their overarching vision is going to be the, the overarching uh, goal of the organization to hopefully have the management that is in alignment with that overarching vision and is achieving the short-term goals within that. And of course, a key to that is, is communication between the departments, communication with management with regards to those issues and any kind of conflicts that could come up within them. Uh, possible unnecessary duplication of activities. So as we de decentralize, it could be the case that you have uh, two different departments that are basically repeating activities that could be done uh, in one area. So in other words, if you had one centralized area that was run by the corporate office decisions being made and then uh, dictated throughout the company, then those type of activities that are going to be necessary for multiple departments would then be dictated and be uh, made in accordance with that hierarchical structure. However, if you have different departments making different decisions, it's quite possible that those different departments uh, duplicate type of processes that may be able to be done uh, in a centralized format. And that duplication, of course, will call, cause waste and inefficiency. So we want to be able to be vigilant of any kind of uh, duplicated process, see, see if it's possible for us to say, hey, can we have uh, some type of service department that would basically do this process and then uh, divvy that up or allocate those costs to uh, the divisions?